September 1938. You've been captured by the Soviet Red Army in the Arctic, conditions perfectly suited to these battle-hardened soldiers. While in a desperate bid to escape, the soldiers took your government agent hostage on the other side of a complex cave network. You commandeered a mining cart left by enemies, screeching through tunnels at blistering speeds while Russian forces trail behind. This is what it sounds like. And that just about summarizes Deadfall Adventures, a 2013 action-adventure release by The Farm 51, a Polish developer responsible for Necrovision and Painkiller Hell and Damnation. Attempting to recreate the work of Steven Spielberg, it ends up being exactly what a metal market game shouldn't be, an imitation of art far grander in scale, budget, and quality. Threadbare sound design is hardly the only offense, with the game's low budget rearing its ugly head through animations, level design, character models, and more than anywhere else, cutscenes. While environments may look beautiful at times and pummeling enemies with traps is gratifying, the sheer sloppiness of the game's most basic mechanics dampen what could have possibly been a bold middle market alternative to Uncharted or Tomb Raider. And when I say basic, I'm talking about walking and how it causes glitches with enemies and yourself. Polluted with invisible walls that make each level, no matter how vast the backgrounds are, feel overly confined. And without an original bone in its body through gameplay, mechanics, or even set pieces, there's not much to reveal for players, which is probably why I've never finished this game and wouldn't recommend it. So what about the Farm 51's latest title, Get Even? A sci-fi psychological thriller telling the desperate struggles of a man reliving the memories of an innocent woman strapped with a bomb. Considering the work seen previously, a far more ambitious concept presented in the vein of Fincher, Nolan, and Brooker, you'd think this would be destined for failure. He was chained to a rock with an eagle eating his liver. Please! But it isn't. Where Deadfall's globetrotting adventure remains unsolved, Get Even is something I finished the morning after launching it, featuring easily the most intoxicating narrative I've seen since Frictional Soma. But what really floored me wasn't the persistent twists, morally great characters, fascinating science fiction, or involving score, but that Get Even's gameplay is even worse than Deadfall Adventures. I'll explain. Now, Deadfall's gameplay is exactly what you'd expect from a middle market FPS released during the seventh console generation. Point and click shooting galleries without consequences, tactics, or variety, thanks to hit scan weapons aiming down sights and regenerating health that many have criticized for years. But at the very least, Deadfall's mediocrity features a high speed of movement, plentiful ammunition, and decently powerful weapons. Connect the dots puzzles and uneventful pursuits hurt the pacing, but there's little to interrupt the action when it's happening. Meanwhile, Get Even incorporates exactly what you'd expect from a middle market FPS during the 8th console generation. The very worst line of sight stealth mechanics attached to a binary morality system that chastises every shot taken only to reveal that its bad ending isn't much different from the good ending. So it's a stealth game, but not really because you can't distract enemies or knock them out. So it's a shooter, but not really because there's less than 8 guns and environments are obnoxiously compressed. The Farm 51 still haven't resolved their troubles with movement from Deadfall either, as my character got stuck not once, not twice, but six times. The geometry is far more threatening than any goons since it's about as leveled as a topographical globe and without the luxury of a jump key. So while Get Even's atmosphere and tone create a sense of paranoia and distress, these emotions become attached to the game's technical issues rather than its mechanics or story. And the restrictive design of where you can go and how to get there makes it hard to care about the potential consequences. If Deadfall's an uneventful road trip, then Get Even's an urgent journey with several breakdowns. So with an arguably inferior gameplay sandbox to its predecessor that wasn't much good in the first place, how does Get Even compel so viciously? Well, it's because the gap between good and bad is much smaller than I thought. That minecart set piece showed in Deadfall, were it to have gorgeous graphics, convincing animations, and smooth motion, wouldn't engage because the sound design is so underwhelming it undermines the sequence. The music isn't layered on a cacophony of sounds, it's filling a void. Not using proper foley with the cart makes it impossible to simulate a sense of speed, weight, or presence in relation to the environment. 
Poorly delivered lines with stiffly animated scenes don't allow players to relate with the character's struggles. All the audience receives upon looking beyond the surface level is disappointment. And it's these details where Get Even has massively improved. Olivia Derivy's score serves as an emotional pillar for the story. The voice actors do a phenomenal job emoting their characters' dire situations and conflicted morals. Sound effects do have a relation to the environments. And most importantly, the team's meager budget is maximized in intelligent ways. Tacked on multiplayer and survival modes are scrapped. Cutscenes are used to transition between levels with subtle live action. The sci-fi setting allows for sequences that don't require handcrafted animations, giving the team time to polish the animations that do exist, and demonstrates the capabilities of their actors. So while Get Even's gameplay leaves much to be desired, the improvements Farm 51 made in storytelling, sound design, music, and visual immersion elevate their work far beyond what they've ever done before, despite how similar it may be mechanically. While I'm the opposite of someone that demands high fidelity, presentation is extremely important, because it's what gives context and atmosphere to what we do in games, and gamers are passionate about it. We endlessly debate art style online, spend hours customizing characters, and go to live concerts to hear the medium's most iconic melodies, and get evens a strong example of how improvements in just a few areas can turn water into wine. But there's a much more powerful narrative here outside of the game. As I've talked about before, the 7th and 8th console generations absolved dozens of studios around the world. Whether it was from years of exhaustive work, abuse of staff, overwhelming competition, or gargantuan budgets, we've witnessed multiple franchises and their creators fall underneath the weight of all this madness. And more will within time. Especially those born in the upper echelons of the industry, where success must be achieved from birth. But that's not how creators work. From inventors of the television to Judas Priest, it's mistakes that lead to success. And the Farm 51's a classic case in point. While playing through Get Even, you can see the DNA of Deadfall Adventures throughout, and where the team directly learned and improved from. What had players flipping through on-screen prompts during puzzles is replaced by a single device controlled with one key. Where high fidelity couldn't be achieved is now masked by the player's own imagination. Levels that appeared to be vast but were restrictive in practice have become intentionally claustrophobic corridors that set the game's tone. Without this piece of crap that made me want to chuck my monitor out the window, I wouldn't have an experience that glued me to the screen. And it's why no matter how critical I might be of their games, I'll always wish developers like Farm 51, Spiders, Cyanide Studios, and so many more the best. While they might not become someone's favorite studio on their first, second, or fifth attempt, they're on the road to being so, and without anyone to stop them but themselves. How much impact does the console war have on the quality of games? Aside from children wasting their breath on forums and timed exclusives, not much. I was actually quite irritated hearing some people complain that Microsoft's press conference didn't have any Xbox One exclusives. Are we really going to protest more people having access to a game? Is there something the Xbox One can do that a PS4 or PC can't? Getting a game into as many hands as possible is one of the few things that publishers and developers and gamers can agree on. And the console wars go directly against this outlook. Would you watch someone doing a Let's Watch video of one of your videos? Depends on the person. Were they a developer of the game in question, hell yeah I'd watch and be both excited and terrified by what their reactions would be. Would you watch someone else's watching a Let's Video video of one of your- Okay, I'm skipping all of these. How much for Ray to cosplay as Frost? The budget for a buck cosplay. Ray, can you make a video on how to cosplay as yourself? Step 1. Don't. Hey Ham, you answered the question for me. That's so sweet. Why do you hate me? I don't. Ubisoft does. Let's see if this works. Oh, you're gonna get, yeah, you're probably gonna get banned now. <laughs> I swear to God, but it's a custom game. Why would it still work for custom games? That's my question. Friendly mission success. Hey! 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 Oh my lord! Uh. You're totally posting that on Twitter, aren't you? Uh...